Hello learners, uh, welcome to our session today. My name is CPA Aringo Frederick. So today is a continuation of what we are doing earlier on and uh, today we are going to summarize what we started earlier and that should be topic 2, final part of it. And the final part of it, we will be looking at uh, decision trees. Remember it's still under decision uh, theory. So what should you understand at any given point you are talking of decision trees? Most importantly, you should recall what we did uh, on uh, EMVs. The same concept on uh, expected monetary value whereby we are talking of our payoffs of returns times our probability which gave us the aspect of expected monetary value. So the same concept is going to apply when we be dealing with decision tree. It's only that this time round I won't be working with payoffs. I won't be working with payoffs but I'll be using the same returns yes but represented in a form of in a form of tree so straight i want us to go and uh, understand the concept of decision tree as i will illustrate with what uh, we did uh, in our last uh, sessions so when you will be talking of decision tree you should always be understand that this is a form of display term it as a graphical display graphic uh, display of decision alternatives probabilities probabilities states of nature and uh, aspect of profits slash benefits and losses in form of a tree with branches in form of a tree with branches so that's the main element that you should always understand at any given point you are dealing with decision tree it's just a graphical display of our decision alternatives probability states of nature and profit and a ben or a benefit and losses in form of a tree with branches. That's the very key because as we've mentioned, I'll just be representing all this. But common thing that you should always understand and the basic of decision tree that you must always keep in mind is the concept of nodes. Whenever we're dealing with decision trees, we should always be very familiar with what is known as decision nodes. So we normally talk of two decision nodes talk of uh, aspect of our uh, node decision nodes but uh, the nodes that we'll be talking about we'll be talking of uh, every decision tree must have decision node and state of nature node state of nature node so every decision uh, tree that we'll always be talking about they must contain these two nodes either uh, they must contain a decision node and aspect of state of nature node and these nodes are represented uh, with this before I explain all these nodes are uh, probably uh, entails you find that uh, decision node will always be represented by this sign so this is uh, our decision node this is our decision node whereas state of nature node will always be represented with a circle state of nature node so now we'll be talking of uh, these nodes. Why are we saying that this is a decision node? Because it is at this point where the decision maker has a choice to make. At this point, decision maker has a choice, has a choice to make. Meaning that uh, we are saying that uh, at this node, this person has a choice to make. He can either select, say, A or B. He has a choice to select on the alternatives that he or she will be having. But what about state of nature node? Most of the cases for you to identify the state of nature node, they'll always be accompanied by probabilities. They'll always be accompanied by probabilities. And why are we accompanying them with probabilities? It is because we don't have control over them. We don't have control over the state of nature. That's why you'll find that probably you could be having state of nature. Then you are given different, say, levels. Talk of high, probably. Talk of medium and talk of low. Given attacked, uh, rather having the component of our probability, just an example, we should be having such kind. So that's why we're saying that at this point, at this node, 
the decision maker is not in control of anything. Meaning that he is in control because things are very uncertain. That's why we are touching the aspect of probabilities. So the key elements as I have mentioned earlier, so long as you are very good in identifying which node are you supposed to use, if it's either a decision node or a state of nature node, you should be very good in handling any question for decision tree. This is the main concept. And of course, we'll be talking of uh, the steps in solving steps in solving uh, steps in uh, solving uh, decision tree problems. Step in solving decision tree problems. Steps in solving decision tree problems. Also very important for you to understand the steps. So long as at the back of your mind you've grasped these two elements, now working out with steps, it will be very easy. So number one step, we normally see that you have to define the problem. Number one step of decision tree, we are saying that you have to define the problem. Define the problem. Very key. Define the problem. Number two, we are talking of structure or draw the decision tree. Structure. This is number two. You have to structure or draw the decision tree. Very key. Very key. Very key. Number three, we are saying that uh, assign probabilities to the state of nature. You have to assign the probabilities to the state of nature. Oh, and of course, uh, the state of nature node, we had seen this component as denoted. They are always going to be attached with what? Probabilities. Number four step, estimate payoffs for each possible combination of alternatives and states of nature. Estimate payoffs for each possible combination of alternatives and states of nature. Then number five, which is the last step. Solve the problem by computing expected monetary value for each state of nature node. Expected monetary value, meaning that if I'd be having our returns at this point, I multiply by our probabilities for us to arrive at that point. Then you are seeing that this is done by working backward. That is starting at the right of the tree and working back to the decision nodes on the left. I'll be working from right to left then now we are seeing that uh, this method of working from uh, right to left this is known as rollback approach the rollback approach so my good students so long as you are very good with the steps but the key element as i had mentioned earlier on these two key elements they are going to assist you in solving the decision tree problems very easily so i want you to join me in the next session where we are going to handle an illustration question from our past paper this illustration question will give us a deep understanding of what we'll be terming or rather any problem that we'll be having under decision tree. Thank you very much and meet me in the next session. Thank you.